Good, Good morning. morning from St. Martin. It is so early. It is. I mean, you know, it's seven. Uh, we haven't heard any announcements that we're all clear yet, but that should be any minute. Mm -hmm. We're going to grab some breakfast. And the plan for today is we're doing something that we haven't done since 2016. It's been a long time, so a lot of you have never seen us do it. <laughs> That's true. We are heading out for an island tour with Bernard's yeah. Tours. Now, they used to have multiple options, but mm -hmm. their one now is called the Adventure Island Tour 2. Yes. That's it. I don't know what happened to one, but... <laughs> don't get confused by that, though. It's a great option. That's right. So it's like a five-hour tour. Mm -hmm. They take you all over the place. You go to the French side. You go to Maho Beach. You go to Orient Beach. You it, It's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It's also all the fun things that are St. Martin packed into a nice day. Yeah, a nice little package. <laughs> but first, breakfast. I think we'll just jump down to Java Blue because mm -hmm. they normally have little sandwiches and stuff down there. Yep. And then get this adventure going. Sounds good. Wahoo! <laughs> So here at Java Blue, we've got English muffin sandwiches. There's some sandwiches on wheat bread. All kinds of stuff. Bacony, sausage, egg, cheese. Down here we've got croissants, pastries, muffins, including granola, banana, lemon poppy seed, and chocolate chip. Over here on the side, they do have all the hay beverages. But we've got the grab-and-go section. So what are we looking at? Fresh fruit, which can be grabbed and gone. Granola. Oh, which I guess can be done like a cereal with some milk. Ooh. And the gateway in the forward of the ship is open and ready for you down on day three. Yeah, the midship gangways are open and we are headed ashore. We've got Bob and Sarah from Cuse Cruisers along with us today. We've got Morella Explorer 2 in port with us on our dock. There's also the Aida Diva and some sort of a Regent Seven Seas ship at the other dock. Yeah, Seven Seas Navigator, that's who it is. And there is Aida Diva. So we are just gonna head to the roundabout area and we're looking for the white vendor tent on the other side of the roundabout. Oh, Santa's here! It's St. Martin Santa Claus. Wow. Oh, well, they got a Christmas tree. So from the St. Martin sign, we're gonna wander out this way toward the car rental area. There's multiple ways to get to this zone, if I recall. Hey, chick chicks. All right, well, we found the taxi roundabout. We're gonna head over to the other side of that. Oh, I see it in the distance. We just need to sneak between these buildings. There it is. There is the sign we're looking for. Well, first thing you see, giant sign, Bernard's Tours. That's a good sign. <laughs> we have reached our official first destination for check-in. We are all checked in. We got our stickers. We are ready to roll here in just a few minutes. All right, our group is on the move. Let's get loaded up. We have a cooler with drinks, which is complimentary. We have water, we have Coca-Cola, we have beers and my homemade rock punch. My name is Melanias, but a lot of people don't remember, so you're gonna notice a name tag on my person that says mailman on it. We'll be doing the entire island of St. Martin, St. Martin. Now you heard me do the pronunciations. It's because the landmass we are on at this present time, it's the smallest landmass in the world, divided into two completely separate countries. We'll have a longer period of time at the major stops, which we have the beach in Grand Casse. We have the French capital of Marigot. Get into the third major stop, which is the Princess Juliana International Airport. All year round, it's a constant summer, 82 to 96 degree weather. Now about 14 and a half years ago, for one day, we had 11 cruise ships in port. Now at that time also, there was only one pair, one jetty, with the two jetties we now have, we could accommodate up to eight of the largest cruise lines in the world at this present time. Now the Arawak Indians were the peaceful tribe out of the two, which they were being followed around by the Caribs, which was the warring tribe out of the two. We are at the border between the Dutch and French side. Now, no need, need to worry too much with this location because the second location you will have a lot more because at the second location there's going to be two signs and four flags and a monument. Now also as we stop here, half of this bus is right now in France and the other half in the Netherlands. You're literally doing a European tour ride right here in the Caribbean, guys. Yeah. We will be stopping different locations for picture taken for 10 minutes at the different stops. And uh, to the right of us, we have the Oyster Bay Marina. See the marina all torn up, torn to shreds, guys. But before Hurricane Irma, this was a very vibrant uh, marina because 
it was actually used for rentals. There would be over 200 sailboats and catamarans sitting in the marina. People would fly into the island here and they would rent one of those catamarans or sailboats and they would have the option to sail to one of the six islands that surrounds us. So our first stop is here at Oyster Bay, Oyster Bay Marina, which I guess is where the French first made landfall here on the island. Got about 10 minutes for some photos. Yeah, you can still see some of the damage there at the marina from Hurricane Irma, which was five years ago at this point. Wow. Yeah. Follow me to the best beach bar in the world. <laughs> we do have open bar on the bus today, he said. He's got water and sodas and rum punch and all sorts of stuff we can have. He said it's five o'clock somewhere, so may as well start. <laughs> hey guys, how are you? <laughs> Bonjour! <laughs> That's right, there you go. Now, uh, you're gonna notice the waves breaking, guys. Again, we are on the Atlantic side. Okay, and there's a constant trade wind, and uh, we're gonna stop very soon with uh, the Coralita of the street, and there's a tower. You can make your way up to a higher point and get yourself some uh, pretty nice pictures at that location, also. 30 miles to the right, we have the famous French island of uh, St. Bart's, the very island you've been hearing about all the celebrities frequenting, being followed around by the paparazzi. So this is the Coralita, it's a natural reserve. Two small islands uh, next door. If you're into geo tracking, you would have an opportunity to uh, walk across to the small one to the right, and there's the uh, box that you could leave your GPS coordinates so people could track you. There's 27 of those uh, locations here on the island. We've come now for our second photo stop. We can see St. Bart's over to the right. There's a little zoom in on St. Bart's. You can either take a plane or a ferry over there. Well, we'll just get our bass going here for a minute. They've got the platform you can climb up to. But I can see all my views from down here. Ooh, instead of going up, we can come down to the water side. Got some folks walking out there. Can't really see them on the camera. They're going out to do some surfing. Our guy mailman said there's a lot of wind surfing happens out here. Yeah, they're oh, wow. it's a little windy, but yeah, they're walking. They're able to walk all the way out, follow to that island, and then there's a drop off where the waves are breaking. He said where it goes from about 75 to 100, no, over 100 feet. Wow. All right, one more bask here before we get back in the bus and move on. We got a few major stops today. We got some beach time coming. Maho, of course. Marigo. Yeah, let's hop back on. One and a half minutes, we'll be making a stop to visit iguanas. Now, the location where we're going to stop, there's going to be a gentleman there that keeps the iguanas from uh, being caught and eaten. Because everywhere you go to in the world, there's an animal blame on tasting like the chicken. And the iguana is that animal. Now the iguanas, they look a lot more aggressive than they actually are because the iguanas, they only eat vegetation, fruits and vegetables, flowers of the trees. They don't eat meat and they don't bite intentionally. If you try to uh, take them up, they'll let you know it's not cool to take them up. They will use their very long tail as a whip and they will smack you with it. <laughs> That's because they, uh, they are fed constantly. They are like pigeons. Yes, you see the orange is actually when it's mating season. The males will turn bright orange to attract the females. Welcome to the iguana stop. <laughs> So if you like, they'll put a leaf on a stick and let you feed the iguanas, take pictures with them, just as long as you don't pick them up. Oh, that must be the call of the iguana down there. Could be like rice and spaghetti. Rice and spaghetti and oh, leaves. Oh yeah, look at him back there. He's gonna hang you up. Oh, you've got a leaf on a stick. You've made a friend. <laughs> Got a bunch of shadows up there, but that works. Remember, there's a tail, they don't really bite you if you look to grab them. They run away, they swing their tail as they run, and it can give you a bad mark on your hand or your foot. Like well, man, man, can feed him a hand. Uh oh. Now you could pet him. Oh. You want a picture? Oh, you feel nice. Yeah, that's the snake skin boots you were yeah. checking out in the <laughs> No, mall. I don't wear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry about anything. 
and you don't have to be scared. It's okay, it's okay. Uh -oh. Smile, smile, just smile. There you Sarah's go. Look at you. Come on, whisper up. <laughs> okay. I'm feeling your heart beating in your head. Yes, it is. No, don't be afraid. You're yeah, perfectly okay. harmless. Good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Once, one. echoes. That flap of skin is actually to let the uh, smaller males around know the big boy, the big papa is around. Yeah. All right, now we are off to the beach. As we travel around the island also, there's iguanas all over, guys. Next stop is going to be in the village of Brancas. That's where we're going to be doing our beach time. And that's going to be overlooking the island of Anguilla. And the village that we headed to originally was one of the small fishing villages on the island. But Brancas was transformed into the gourmet capital of uh, the island. From the 15th of January right down to the middle of April, the street would be closed completely to all traffic, only used by the guests and the locals to enjoy themselves. Eating, partying, drinking, falling down. Every Tuesday <laughs> for three months. Yes, that's uh, Madi de Brancas. To the right, you have the restrooms. Staff will assist you with chairs and umbrellas. And at uh, an hour from now, well, actually 12:30 is when our departure would be from here. We have made it to Captain Frenchie's. Let's see if we can get all checked in here. Ooh, that's what I'm after right now. A little peek out at our beach here. So we're in the Grand Cas area. We got some waves and stuff kicked up out there. Doesn't look like a whole lot in the way of snorkel opportunities today necessarily, but it is a gorgeous beach. Well, they've given us a cocktail menu while we're here. Looks like we got a lot of stuff for, I guess that's about 10 euros. Oh, there's the other side of the cocktail menu. They got a special on Aperol Spritz. <laughs> and also got tapas and whatnot. Oh, it's a tapas beach. <laughs> <laughs> It may be a little too rough for us to comfortably swim, but we are at least going to say we touched our feet to this French water. Oh la la! <laughs> that is refreshing. Sarah says she's glad there's waves. <laughs> it's a little too chilly for uh, comfortable swimming. It's beautiful. It is. That's nice, actually. Alright, we ordered a round of beverages. Dee has gotten an Aperol Spritz. The bar was actually branded with Aperol logo and they have cups with an Aperol logo, so you have to do it. I got the, what is mine called? Frenchie's Classic. Little passion fruit, little other stuff going on, pineapple. Frenchie's Signature, there we go. Bob and Sarah got some mozzarella stick action. Yeah, I'm used to thinking marinara. How do they do that here on the French side? Like Remoulade. Oh, he does look like tartar sauce, actually. <laughs> well, we have spent a fairly pleasant hour here at Captain Frenchie's. Little snacks, little drinks. I guess we'll get ready to head back to the bus. Man, they got like cigars and hats. Hmm. Oh, looks like our ride is parked here just across the way. Perfect. Quite interesting. So Mailman said that this beach is pretty much right where the Atlantic meets the Caribbean and it's usually pretty calm, but they're having some kind of what he refers to as like an underwater type of storm, which is preventing snorkeling and causing all these waves. Dee has just handed me a glass of delightful homemade rum punch. That makes everything all better. How's it doing? Really good. <laughs> and the journey is going to take us about uh, roughly 10 to uh, 12 minutes to get to the next stop. All right. All right. We're off to Marigolds. And there, when we get there, I'm going to show you where everything is. Or should I say, off we Marigo? No, I should not. I should not. Truckloads and truckloads and truckloads of dirt, rocks, sand that was trucked in, filling it out of the ocean which all of that was done in order for the movie. The people that came into the island here to film the movie, Speed 2 Cruise Control. Now, as we make our descent also, guys, uh, we are now going to be passing the power and desalination plant for the French section of the island. Dutch and French, and also Spanish and English is taught them, but automatically in school. But most people on the island also would speak quite a few more languages. Now guys, we've made our way to the waterfront in Marigo. Gonna be palm trees. That's where the ocean was originally. This entire area, all of this, what we're driving on now also, straight over. Man-made. One of the original structures from the movie Speed 2. 
the building off to the right of us, but it's uh, pretty uh, badly damaged from Hurricane Irma. Welcome to Marigo, the French capital. We've got about a 40 minute shopping stop here. I did notice a new bakery on the way in, Le Fernand, which I don't remember from last time. Take a little peek down at the water first. Marina excitement. We're gonna jump across the street here to check out this shopping zone. Yeah, Le Fernand up there. Here's the little statues. All kinds of vendor markets. Tents and things. Hi, bird, St. Martin. Nice. So, Shay Fernand, there's the official name. Oh, they've got like homemade ice cream, granitas, but I'm more interested to see, oh, uh, this selection of pastries. We got macarons, or actually, these are more like what I would call macaroons with the coconut. Look at all these cakes and things. Ooh. When you round the corner, they've got brioche, they've got almond croissants, they've got pain au chocolat. All right, here is the whole haul. Bob and Sarah went with a quiche lardon, which I believe is basically like a bacon quiche, pain au chocolat, which of course is full of chocolate. We got a pâté poulet, which is a chicken pie, the royal chocolat, and an almond croissant. <laughs> That was just what I needed. All right, we are charged up for a little bit of shopping. We got probably uh, 10 or 15 minutes, well, about 15 minutes actually to shop and look around. Yeah. Y'all, that was good stuff. There was like a little curry up in that chicken. The uh, chocolate thing, mm. Mm. it was sweet, but that was Too my winner. My blood, Too rich good. for D. Anyway, good, get it, the Royale Chocolat. When that croissant, it was a nice dense croissant, but it had good flavor. Anyway, we're shopping now. Shot glasses, magnets, hats. Yeah, you step through here, you got a whole nother world of shopping. Oh, little rock art. This art rocks. Oh, we could get a cousin to orange hat called blue hat with a nice little bow on it for D. Oh, yeah. That's cute oh, for that. live streams. Like one with like an orange, orange flower. flower. Well, some folks have already loaded back up, so I guess we will follow suit. Getting ready to head over to, I believe, Maho is our next major stop. From here, the journey about uh, roughly 12 to 13 minutes. All right. The landing strip at the airport was actually a very short landing strip, only 11,000 feet, which was not regulation length for an international airport landing strip, so it was extended by having sand dredged out of the Simpsonby Lagoon. People would stand at the beach, and when there's a departure of the planes, they would literally, some of them, cross the street and hang on to the fence, surfing the fence, guys. We're about to cross the border between the Dutch and the French side of the island right here, guys. Notice four flags blowing in the wind, and uh, the monument where the treaty is signed annually by the uh, two governments. Since 1648, when it was first signed, every year on the 11th of November, that would be redone, guys. Now, if you look to the left of us at this present time, You'll see there's a yellow line and there's a small circle painted across the street. That indicates the zero point between the Dutch and French side right here, guys. Yeah, we made a very quick photo stop here at the border. You can see the French sign, the flags flying, the monument, and the sign welcoming us back to the Dutch side. Nice. You can have your feet in both countries. One foot in each country. Woohoo! Here's the Dutch side sign officially. A couple more Basques, and then we're off to Maho. All right, I gotta do it again. Oh, traveling to France. All right, wait a minute. Going back to the Netherlands. Going back on the bus. Whoops, here I was thinking that my butt was in France and my legs were in, in the Netherlands. But I guess the monument, the little rounded thing there actually is the divider line. Not quite the yellow line. <laughs> and we're off again. International Airport, guys. And uh, notice as we cross the border, as I explained, all signs automatically would be written in English. But majority of those symbols would actually be people that travel from island to island to work. And as uh, they are living on their boats, there's no taxes that would be collected by the governments. So all of what we're driving on here is man-made. All the 
way until we go around the corner of the street. Not here, but uh, further on. We would have between 350 to 450 planes would land and take off from this airport per day, guys. This one right in front of us, small uh, turbo prop. Yeah, yeah, like the very uh, dramatic, specific danger sign. We actually have one inbound right now. Headed straight for us. Right above the buoy. Yeah, there's an inbound coming in now. What's this? There we go. are pretty big uh, here, too. Yeah, it has uh, crosswinds. Yeah, that's a turbo prop also. Now here we are, this is the famous Sunset Barn Grill, guys. Okay guys, this is gonna be our pickup point right here at uh, 2.40. 2.40. 40 minutes. So 40 minutes. Now we just have to make our way up here to the beach zone. Down here past the sandbar, out to the actual sand. Welcome officially to Maho Beach. See how far down here we can get, and we'll start looking for some planes coming in. I think we should have a couple of decent sized arrivals this afternoon. Well, we found prime position. We've got what I believe is a 737 coming in right over our heads. Um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, that's about as close as we've ever gotten to a plane at Maho Beach, I think. I think. Nice. Well, let's see if anything else cool happens. Wow. Maybe one will take off, but then you get sandblasted, and that's no fun. I'd yeah, rather I don't like land. that part. Well, we got a little one coming in now. Look at him working with the wind there. Well, this guy's coming in at a slightly strange angle. He's got a little turn to do here. Done. Guys, we're gonna move a few feet down the beach. I think we can get them maybe almost overhead. Ah! <laughs> Look at me trying to be artsy and weird. That was probably awful, wasn't it? I, I tried. Think. It was cool. <laughs> Ooh, we got another big one. Ready for it. Oh, he's trying to get all them cool selfies. Oh my gosh. It scares me every time. That was awesome. We've got one more on the horizon. This might be our last good catch before we head back. Oh, that is pretty sizable, actually. I told you. Yeah, from, from afar, I thought that was a lot smaller. this weird artsy shot again. Is there even a plane in there? <laughs> no, he went over there. Guys, I'm great at artsy shots, I tell you. Especially with sunglasses on, I can't see the screen. <laughs> nice. We got another one doing a little side approach here, a little smaller craft. <laughs> and the water comes in. <laughs> On that note, I think that was some Maho fun for today. <laughs> that was a Maho lot of fun. Back over to the bus. Oh, we can catch some landings from afar. All aboard. Okay, next stop is going to be back at the cruise port, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, did you guys enjoy your day so far? Yeah. yeah. All right, perfect, perfect. We may have a departing gift. Let's see if we get one more sneak peek at a plane on the way out. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, we're going to take off directly at us. Hey. There he goes. 
One parting gift. <laughs> That's cool. All right, back to the cruise port we go. Photo stop now here so we can peek across to the ships before we jig back over there and get on them. Mm. Well, we've made it back to the port. We gotta show our security cards to get back in the security gate here. All right, now we're just gonna head back to the ship. Oh yeah, there's the cut through where you can do the water taxi over to the beaches. Got the festive tunes happening. Here are a couple of different festive tunes, actually. Oh, we found some shade because our ship blocks the entire sun. Wow, <laughs> look at that girl. Speaking of festive tunes, they're cranking them up here for us. Oh, DJ Holy here. moly! The party people have arrived! <laughs> hey! Now walking is overrated. Just dance your way back to the ship. Here we go, here we go! Yo, I'm telling you, we cannot hide from Lee, okay? Oh. Home sweet home.